Andy Warhol once said, in the future, everyone will be famous for 15 minutes. Now, the, the quips attributed to Warhol, even though there's some dispute as to whether or not he coined it, it was on a program of a show of his, uh, an exhibition in 1968 out in Sweden. It gained tremendous cultural resonance in the 70s and 80s. I mean, we've all heard the quote. It's a good quote. And the quote, and a lot of Warhol's work resonates with a view that celebrity is something that's becoming mass produced, manufactured, cheap. Often there's discussions about celebrity and you see people say, oh, there are so many people who are famous for being famous or famous for nothing. And a lot of people see this new breed of celebrity and the attention we pay to them, and they take it as a sign of dysfunction in society. It's the, or, you know, a, a decline in our character or something that, that is otherwise not great. Now, Warhol's observation was made a, 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 and the traction that the quote gained what happened in a very specific historical context. And it was a period in which mass communications technology was evolving in ways that made new forms of communication possible and new cultural production enterprises more viable. In the 70s and 80s, there was a shift towards uh, uh, mass communications media that allowed people to um, uh, consume programming on a personal level, like without other people. There were more televisions. The Walkman came out, car radios and cassette players, uh, uh, portable audio like boom boxes. Uh, and so one change that occurred in the 70s and 80s was uh, broadcast consumption or media consumption. A lot of it moved out of the family room and into people's personal spaces. And that allowed for new forms of consumption, right? Uh, it might be that the whole family doesn't want to watch an episode of Jackass on MTV or the whole family doesn't want to listen to a, a shock jock, you know, or consume pornography. But when personalized consumption was more viable, those types of products gained traction. Another change that happened was that there were new media developing that circumvented both legal and informal regulations of culture. So for example, cable TV and satellite TV allowed adult programming to be broadcast on TV, whereas that wasn't allowed on broadcast TV uh, over the airwaves. Uh, video cassettes uh, and cassette tapes. Cassette tapes enabled uh, new forms of music to be distributed. Music that wouldn't be sold or carried by a record label, but was easy enough for people to develop grassroots markets for. So the point that I, and, and, and what happened here was these new media created new cultural outlets and new forms of culture. And when people looked at them, they were different from what they had seen before. And some of people were left asking, what is this garbage? What is this pornography on television? You know, what's this rap music? Who's this idiot on, on, on FM radio? Why is this popular? And, and at the time, there were a lot of debates about censorship. Fast forward 20 years, and our era is like that on steroids. Whatever communication affordances were created by things like cable TV or cassette tapes is now, uh, it, it's, it, it, you know, it's exponentially larger over the internet. The internet is created like an almost unlimited pipeline of content, and it's almost impossible to uh, regulate. And technology has evolved so that people with next to no technical knowledge or, or specialty equipment or money can set up uh, broadcast outlets that command audiences that are the size of what commercial audiences drew uh, in past eras. Like, for example, at our peak uh, on my podcast, we were getting about 1,200 listeners a week for a one hour program. That's, that's like a, a drive home audience in a, for a radio station in a mid-sized city. Like it's one person on a shoestring budget bringing in audiences that used to be commanded by media enterprises. And so what's happened is all sorts of new content has become available and all of us have uh, or, or media audiences have fragmented. We're now, whereas once we might have all watched the same set of shows or listened to the same announcers, watched the same news. Now our 
media diets are becoming more individuated. Right? We have a distinct media diet, even from the people we live with and our close friends. We follow different Facebook groups. We follow different people on Twitter. We like different YouTube videos. We, you know, tune into different blogs. And that process where everybody's tuning into a different mix of uh, producers is called audience fragmentation. So what's happened is there's a lot more content, a lot more media outlets, and we're dividing our attention between it. And so what happens is there is now a much larger universe of small scale celebrities who are delivering content that was once unconventional. And so the the Andy Warhol observation of, uh, of just fame looking cheap or mass produced or easy because we're seeing so much of it, it's now much more like that. And it's an interesting, th this development is interesting in a lot of ways. It gives us a space for pro uh, probing concepts of fame and celebrity, seeing how they've changed, making note of this new environment and, and, and thinking through the concepts.